This is what we have studied. Now we have studied two things up till now in this chapter. A that a process is spontaneous if energy is being diffused in that process. And then we've moved on in quest of finding a physical quantity that will numerically give us an idea whether there has been diffusion in energy or not. We found this quantity S is equal to dq reversible by T. This entropy gives us an idea of whether energy is being diffused in the system or not. And if this entropy is positive, that means energy is being diffused. If this entropy is negative, that means energy is being concentrated. So if entropy change is positive in a process, only then the process will be spontaneous. If the entropy change is negative, then the process will not be spontaneous. Okay, now one more thing we have to discuss. How I'm saying this that entropy change is positive or negative and then because I mean, okay, fine. This from here you came to know that this is a state function and then you named it as entropy. Fine, that's okay. But how are you relating that entropy should be positive or entropy should be negative? That part we haven't discussed. Let's discuss that. Nevertheless, this thing is entropy. Now, because it's a, uh, it's a Carnot cycle and I told you it's a special cycle. And um, because it involves all reversible process and during the beginning of the chapter when we started discussing about reversible and irreversible process, I told you that all practical process that we see in practice, all processes that are viable, that are practical, they all are irreversible process. There is no process that is reversible because reversible processes are quasi static. They take infinite time to complete. And generally the process we deal with takes finite time. So all the processes are irreversible. This discussion we had before. So I mean if you have any confusion you can always go back and review that. That why the practically all processes are irreversible and what's the difference between reversible and irreversible. But I'm not going into it once again. I'm using the result that we have discussed before that the processes are reversible processes. Or all are irreversible processes. And here we are taking reversible process. Now Carnot, apart from giving the cycle, also proved that Carnot cycle, if a, the engine util, using Carnot cycle has the highest possible efficiency. There's no cycle which will have more higher efficiency than the Carnot cycle. And there's a Carnot theorem. The Carnot theorem says, I'll, I'll write it right here for you that all all irreversible heat engines between two heat sources or reservoirs are less efficient That Carnot engine. Operating between between the same reservoirs or same sources. Meaning, if you have two sources and if you have an engine in, in between and this engine utilizes this Carnot cycle, then this engine will have highest possible efficiency. If you take any other cycle apart from Carnot cycle, then this, the efficiency of the engine will decrease. Now we have found out the efficiency of Carnot cycle as 1 minus T1 by T2 or I mean, depending upon how you have named it, 1 minus T1 by T2 or 1 minus T2 by T1, whatever. But uh, 1 minus T lower by T higher. That's the formula for efficiency. Now, whatever you get, if, if you know the sink temperature and if you know the source temperature, then you can calculate the Carnot efficiency because it is dependent only on temperature. And that efficiency will be the highest possible efficiency of this engine. And 
obviously we know that this engine is never going to use Carnot principle, Carnot cycle because Carnot cycle involves reversible pathway and this is always going to have a irreversible pathway. So efficiency is always going to be less. Now what's the validity of this theorem? Now I mean the mathematical proof is a little cumbersome and we will not get into the mathematics of this theorem but you believe in me that this theorem is true. Carnot cycle gives you highest possible efficiency. I mean just to give you a little bit of a feel of why it should be valid because you see in this in this process in this process um, what when, when, when we draw the TS diagram like this then in one of the process going from 4 to 1 the temperature is increasing but what is happening that the entropy is remaining constant but generally in practice when you heat a substance then the entropy increases on that substance it do not remain constant but in this graph you observe that the entropy is remaining constant even if the temperature is increasing so in practice entropy will increase when the temperature is increasing and that's why when you entropy is increasing that means some amount of heat is required or absorbed by the system because ds is equal to dq by t. If ds is positive that means entropy is increasing then dq will also be positive. So dq is positive that means system is taking away the heat. If system is taking away the heat that means when we were adding qh and you, the work was done w then now the some amount of heat is absorbed by the system in order to increase its entropy. Now you don't have QH, now you have even smaller amount of heat available for uh, this engine to do work. So now the work done by the engine will be even lesser. When you go for practical systems, the work done by the system will be less because certain amount of energy will be absorbed to increase its entropy. Now since the work done will be less and you are giving QH, so now the W will be, the efficiency will be W by QH, but this W is lesser than what we are expecting theoretically as per the Carnot cycle. Because the total QH that you give as input will be utilized up into do work and a fraction of it, of it will also go to heat up the engine in order to increase its entropy. And that's why the efficiency will be less. This is a little, uh, little bit uh, of explanation of why this theorem should be valid. Otherwise, the mathematical detail is not our job to go into, so I am skipping that. But considering this to be true, that this is the maximum possible efficiency. Fine. Now let's use this result. Now, now see, efficiency is equal to work done by heat given. So work is equal to efficiency into heat given. In case of Carnot cycle, efficiency is 1 minus T2 by T1, 1 minus T low by T high into Q in. Fine. This is work. But practically, as we discussed a moment back, work done is going to be lesser than this. The reason we have discussed there. So actually, for real engine, this work is less than the given work. The given work is this. So this work, actually the work, this is idle. The real work will be lesser than the idle work. That means it will be lesser than this quantity. Fine. Let me name it as Q2. Uh, because if, if, if I name it as Q2, because I mean this is, this is a higher temperature, right? I'm, I'm considering T1 as a higher temperature. So the heat given will be coming from higher temperature. So the heat in, let me name that as Q1. Fine. Now the work done as we understand is the heat in that is Q1 minus heat out that is Q2 because I have taken the temperature lower as T2. Fine. This will be lesser than 1 minus T2 by T1 into Q1. If you rearrange this a little bit, you will find that Q2 upon T2 is greater than Q1 upon T1. If you rearrange a little bit with Q1, if you multiply this Q1, Q1, Q1 is going to get cancelled and you arrange it. 
you will get this result.